Um, our first deal with Central Television and CCTV was back in 1983. And from that time all the way to 2002, we made zero money from, from the market, right? All, all, the, all, the, all the content that we sell for billions of dollars in the US were given to CCTV to air for free for decades and before we, we saw the first um, fruit of our labor. So I think both incredible lucky, also a lot of gr a lot of groundwork was laid before this team, current team that, that, that we got, we, we were right time in the right place. Yeah, and Corey, could you answer that as well? I mean, because I know um, MLS is obviously a smaller league than, than the NBA, but you've been good and aggressive at social media, especially in the US, but we now know that you're kind of exporting the game through all your media deals, and you've got effectively the same challenges but again, with a slightly different dynamic. Yeah, I would say in our case, um, similar to what Michael was saying, we actually had this discussion three or four years ago in the league office that we kept pushing out the message of, we need more fans of Major League Soccer. But then actually we stopped and said, no, 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 no one's a fan of the league in this case. We need fans of our teams and of our players. So at that point, we kind of changed our marketing platform to something that was more player driven and is a sport like soccer that has nearly universal global appeal. Um, it's as simple as signing the right player. And then all of a sudden with that player, you bring uh, the fans that they have. So when we sign a Drogba or we sign a, G a Lampard or Gerard or someone like that that already comes with no global notoriety, what we're starting to look into is how do we then take that notoriety and channel it for the club and the league? And, and how, do we, how do we latch onto that?